Hello everyone. <clears throat> My name is Ying Yan Zhen, and uh, today I'm glad to uh, present our joint work with researchers from Virginia Tech and Princeton. Um, our work model pre framework aims at enhancing the interpretability and the accountability in machine learning sorry, by understanding the impact of changes in training data on the trained machine learning models. And here is the outline of today's presentation. So first, uh, uh, our work focused on analyzing this input and the output behavior of a learning process. Given a machine learning model, we employ a learning algorithm to train model with the training data and then apply the train model for inference tasks. So this input and output analysis can be very complex because itself is um, complex. For example, in gradient descent, uh, we will have thousands or ten thousands of uh, optimization iterations and where we may encounter some local optimals. So um, how can we analyze this input and output behavior and uh, how will the train model and the resulting model predictions change if we vary these training data points? Why do we care about these questions? It's because this is the key to answer these following um, problems like what are the training points with the most or least contribution to the model performance? How to select data that benefit the model performance? Is the training data point memorized by the model, et cetera? Answering these questions are essential to build the trust in machine learning. So um, to understand this uh, input output behavior, in other words, the impact on the model performance from training data, there exists two main branches of research. One is uh, counterfactual analysis. So this line of work, uh, part of them tries to change the input and analyze the change in model output to attribute the cost and the effect uh, between the training data points and uh, the model behaviors. So this work include uh, machine unlearning, uh, incremental model maintenance, uh, influence function, and delta grid. However, these methods are not scalable when a large number of training data points are altered. So they fall into the local analysis. And another branch is to find the parametric mapping from the training data to the model output by supervised learning. So recent work data model is proposed to use linear function to directly learn the model prediction from the training data. However, the selection of this uh, prediction target lacks the common, uh, flexibility to accommodate different evaluation goals. So we will elaborate more about the limitations here. There are some uh, we will, the annotations we will use. We assume there is exists a full training data set D with N data points, where each data point is represented as X, Y, and the dimensional feature is D. And S is a subset of this full set D. We define a base model as F, X, theta with a loss function L, theta, X, Y. And uh, this learning algorithm uh, A will train this model and uh, give us the parameter estimation theta. So the A will map the S to a uh, theta S hat. So in previous work, uh, the counterfactual analysis used the actual content of uh, points I to be removed uh, as the input and use techniques like Taylor expansions to approximate this new parameters trained by the subset S. And due to this capability of first order approximation approach, they can they cannot make accurate estimation when we have large change in the training data. And the model data model use the binary encoding as the input. Um, so this will uh, limit the generalization to the new unseen points, like without the existing data training data set. And also this method require a new learning process if we uh, have interest on the modeling performance on different testing points, or we have some different evaluation matrix. So we address these limitations in our proposed model. And the key idea is to predict the trained model, in particular, the model parameters from the, the training data. We use the actual content as the input. So the learning, uh, the learned the A hat can generalize to other unseen points. And we set the parameters of our trained model as the output. So it can be generalized to other uh, testing points as well as other evaluation matrix. Considering the complexity of this input output and the learning process we are approximating, we select a neural network based set function to approximate A. 
So here is the overview of our proposed uh, method and uh, consider the large size of parameters in this DNN to approximate A. Uh, if we only push the model to minimize the discrepancy between the predicted and actual model parameter, it can be easily overfitted. So we propose two regularization techniques. First is the KKT loss for local regularizer. It is designed to constrain the gradient of the predicted parameters with respect to the learning objective function by the stationary KKT condition. The intuition is that if the learning algorithm can find a near optimal solution, this stationary KKT condition will almost be satisfied by the optimized parameters. And from an overview perspective, an accurately predicted model should maintain a utility close to the ground truth model when evaluated on any testing points. So we propose this global regularizer to constrain the utility of the predicted parameters. So overall, this uh, framework proceeds in two phases. In the first uh, offline training, we collect a set of training samples by permutation sampling. And then this train, the DNA hat, can be used for efficient model parameter prediction given a new training subset uh, through just the evaluation of a hat. So despite the strong expressiveness power of neural networks, not every function can be efficiently approximated. Here we show our study on the approximability of a learning process with neural networks. To answer this question, we adopt the results in a recent uh, study, which shows that functions that have a uh, smaller upper bound of gradient norm can be more efficiently approximated by neural networks with ReLU activations. So if we only consider a single parameter to be predicted in our model, we can reduce this question to um, bounding the gradient norm of this term. So by the optimality condition and the culture Schwarz inequality, we can get the following results for the convex loss function and the non-convex but smooth loss function. Uh, it, it shows that this norm of gradient can be upper bounded by the dimension of the data domain and the, the dimension of model parameters. And also they have such dependency, which is relatively efficient because you can see the number of data points in the denominator. So this proves that we can use the deep neural network to approximate such a learning process. And then we show the experiment results so first, so we examine the method with a sanity check to see whether it can approximate the input-output behavior. Here, we use it to predict the model parameters, parameters trained on a subset of the full data set. And we use three base models. The first two are convex. The third neural network, we use gradient descent to train it. And uh, we apply transfer learning to retrain the large neural networks, such as ResNet-18, on the subsets. So five data sets are tested with varying number of model parameters and the three metrics we adopt for evaluation. The first is about the parameter, the second and third is about the utility. We care more about the actual utility uh, and the correlation between the prediction and the, the actual utility. So here this Spielman correlation is adopted. And the, this result shows that the model parameter achieves the best performance on the most scenarios on all three metrics. And we uh, pro propose this parallel without the two uh, regularizations techniques. It, uh, it can see that it achieves better prediction performance on model parameters under some scenarios, but it can achieve very bad performance on the utility because of very uh, severe overfitting. And we show the applications on the data set addition and the deletion um, here. We show the results on the MNIST data set. And these upper two figures show the predicted loss. The size of each point is proportional to the size of the subset. And in the data set addition, we will include the unseen new points. And this lower two figures show the Euclidean distance. So it, it clearly demonstrates that the model parameter can consistently make accurate prediction on model parameters and the utility. And we, if we look into the result of influence function, we can see that it can make a uh, accurate ap approximation when there is a small scale of change, but with uh, this error will grow uh, rapidly with the scale of change. This also happens for the data model. 
This is due to the limitation of the first, uh, first order Taylor expansion and also the linear approximation by data model. And recall the question like which point is the most reasonable for learning a given parameter in the model? Um, we answer this question by showing model operator can learn the learning patterns. We flip several samples in the subset after the training process and plot the silency map of model parameters uh, changes when a specific data point is excluded from the training set. So from the map, we can see that uh, model operator can accurately predict the relative parameter change caused by removing the individual data, data points. And we can also find that the average value of the parameters uh, predicted by model operator is consistent with the ground truth. So this demonstrates that model operator can uh, generalize on flipped or noisy samples after training. And for the question like, what are the training points with most or least contribution to the model? Uh, we can use the concept of data sharply. However, estimating the sharply value require retraining on model, like the model on large subsets. So here we can apply model operate to speed up this process. Uh, in this figure, we show the Spearman correlation and the computation time of model operate versus using the exact learning algorithm with the same number of permutation iterations to calculate the Shapley value. It demonstrates that model operator can better represent the true Shapley value with the increasing correlation, while it has a slow growth in the computation time with more iterations. Then based on this Shapley value estimated by model operator, we can use it to identify the low quality data in the data set. Here we show the results of model prediction performance uh, after removing the samples ordered by the Shapley value from smallest to largest uh, with different approaches. So uh, these approaches are conducted within the same computation time. We can see that model operate maintain a higher testing accuracy than other methods. It means it can estimate the Shapley value more accurately with a large number of permutations within the same computation time. For the next question, like, is training data point memorized by the model. We adopt this concept, label memorization score. Uh, this is proposed to identify and understand the utility sam of samples. As we can see here, it also requires a large retraining on uh, subsets. So our proposed model for it can also speed up this process. And uh, this uh, here we show the memorization values estimated uh, by the model for it from MNIST dataset. We can see the samples with low, uh, low memorization scores are more atypical, which aligns with the previous work. And we also show the pairs of um, like uh, pairs of samples with influence score from high to low. Intuitively, we see that the high influence pairs correspond to similar images, which benefit most from the high memorized uh, training samples due to the long tail distribution. So model operator can effectively estimate the influence memorization value. The last question is about the model calibration. To reduce the EC error, which measures the weighted average of difference between prediction accuracy and confidence, we can use bagging by generating an ensemble of models on subsample data sets. So with model operator, we can largely increase the number of models to be ensembled efficiently. Here, these results show that combining more models generated by model print effectively reduce the ECE error. So in summary, uh, we show that parametric neural network-based set function can be used to predict the trained model from training data. And we provide the theoretical proof on neural network to approximate the input-output behavior of a learning algorithm. We also show a variety of applications on the interpretability and accountability in machine learning. So for future work, uh, apart from the approximability, we will investigate the study on learnability of the mapping from training data to the trained model. And uh, we will like adjust our method from a fundamental study to specific applications in related areas, including the robustness and the security. So that's all of today's presentation. Thank you.